So this is our climate battery. In some of our past stuff, we talked about how we built this and how it helps with our heating and cooling needs. Well, now we can run it way more efficiently. Let's go through how we spent this last school year building an off-grid solar setup with some students. Off-grid. So this is one of the last things we need to be compliant with the codes in our area. But you know, we already have a working off-grid system. There's been a lot of different people involved at a bunch of different times. So it'll take a little bit to go through. Yeah, see you better. We set out to see how accessible a DIY solar system is. We figured if we could do something with a group of high school students, it's probably something that an average person could tackle. Full disclosure, we're not experts, and I imagine you already have a million ideas about how it could be better. Our focus was something we felt we could piece together, figure out, and then come up with on a budget. Going way back, we started by identifying what parts we actually needed. We knew we needed a battery and an inverter, ideally one that handled charging as well, and then we also needed a solar array. It was tough making sense of everything out there. There's so many names, so many specifications, so we eventually settled on Will Prouse's Easy DIY 48 volt system. I mean, it's in the name of the video. Everything we need in one easy to follow video. He's super clear in all of his stuff and also posts resources, allowing you to go deeper. So we knew exactly what we needed for a template and we went from there. Once we knew what we were working with, component-wise, we needed from infrastructure. This gave us a lot of different chances to contract out different jobs to students, keeping in mind that this is a public space, so anything we put together needs to stand up to the day-to-day -day of traffic kind of in and out of here. Our fab class took a decommissioned transformer box from Fortis, it was huge, and cut it up. They welded some of it back together and transformed it, see what I did there, into something that we could use for all of our electrical stuff in the greenhouse. We lined it with cement board, and so it now holds our inverter, battery, and then a small sub-panel. On the outside, we worked with some great local companies who were super supportive of what we were doing to get a six-inch steel post on the ground. We knew we wanted a top of pole mount so that everyone could move pretty freely around the outside. The mount itself is actually a really cool story as we ended up reaching out to SolarWise Alberta and Beaver Lodge a couple of months ago. They were so supportive and willing to help that they just sent it down. Our students poked away at it over a week, but it was really easy to get set up and into place. We have the ability to pivot it any direction and angle, but have chosen to set it straight solar south just for simplicity's sake. You'll also notice the weird configuration of panels, and that's because there are some larger panels than the six we had originally planned for. We were sharing some stuff about our climate battery at a conference, and ended up connecting with the Alberta Recycling Management Authority who have been overseeing an e-pilot where they're repurposing old solar panels. We're able to work with them to get these reused longies, longies? Not the most efficient for our setup, but we thought it was a great chance to test the viability of recycled panels, especially since our energy needs aren't super high. So there's a lot of our main infrastructure, so before we get into all the other little connecting stuff and where we got it, let's give a bit of credit to one of the ways that we were able to fund this project. First, if you were thinking about it, maybe hit the subscribe button down below. Maybe don't hit the bell, because there's probably more of this channel than you want, but a subscribe definitely helps. One of our side projects is just seeing if we can grow a channel to a thousand subscribers. So every one of you feels super huge, and it means a lot. Okay, so back to funding projects like this. Over the past three years, we've been lucky enough to receive a energy grants through Inside Education here in Alberta. This isn't something we have to do, but I want to mention them because I know there are a lot of teachers out there with really great ideas and they just need a bit of funding to make it happen. The stuff that they do is amazing, and if you're a teacher, you'll want to check them out because they don't just give grants. They do all kinds of programming, and most of it's free, including field trips and then also some student conferences throughout the year. They have a really great team, and if you have any project that might have an energy fit, even if it's a bit of a stretch, reach out to them, make it fit, and then definitely apply for an A-plus energy grant next year. The Will Prouse's stuff helped us figure out the main components. The infrastructure side is going to be totally unique to where it is that you're building your system and what it is that you want out of it. But some of the little components were things that we had to figure out on our own. And so it's probably easiest if we just run through the system from the array to the actual battery. And then I'll just get it to pop up on the screen. 
with where we actually got some of these different parts. Starting at the panels, we needed to add extensions. Having no experience, we erred on the side of bigger conductors and had to make some extension cables. A crimper was a must to add the MC4 connectors. We tried doing some solar stuff before with needle nose pliers, but just didn't have the skill to make the connection something we were confident in. The panels feed into this combiner box. Our array is in a 2S, 2P system, meaning there are two sets of two panels in series, and then they're in parallel with each other. The reason for this is to not exceed the maximum voltage on our inverter. Is that a main feed that runs from the combiner box into the growing dome? I do want to mention that all of this stuff, including just trenching the conduit, grounding the combiner box with a grounding plate, and running cable into the dome was done by students. We also had to figure out the labeling requirements because this project needed to be permitted, and that's why you see these labels everywhere. In the cabinet, the array feeds in through this disconnect so that we can turn off that side of things if we wanted to work on the inverter, or whatever. But keep in mind that this side is still live unless we were to go back and switch it off in the combiner box. Our grow wad and EG4 combo has worked great, and setting everything up was super simple. Will has videos and stuff on his website that go into more depth, but the grow wad instructions were pretty straightforward. We did get some bigger battery cables, and then this side of things we contracted out to an electrician. We found the DC side pretty easy to follow and understand, but weren't comfortable enough with the AC side to do it ourselves. Monroe Electric helped us out with all of this stuff and ran us an outlet to the pond so we could run aeration, as well as one to our climate battery so we can run it more efficiently. Our quiet cool fan that runs the climate battery has its own panel, so when the sun's shining and we need it most, it doesn't even draw that much. We can just push everything into the battery. Now that we've been able to run our climate battery into the evening, the temperature here has been surprising. I know I'm sweating, but sometimes it feels cool, and spending hours in here on a plus 30 day is actually a thing. This has been a terrific project, and we now have some free electricity to run things in our dome. I already mentioned Inside Education, SolarWise Alberta, Monroe Electric, and the Alberta Recycling Management Authority. We couldn't have gotten this up and running without their help. But there are also a couple of other donors who are just as important. Capital Power has been a big supporter of this project and others kind of throughout this area and also gave us the chance to tour the solar farm outside of our town as we were learning about solar and scalability. We also wanted to recognize the Government of Canada and the Healthy Communities Initiative as well as the Energy Futures Lab for helping us fund this project and some of the other stuff that we got going on here. Hopefully, after checking this out, your own DIY system feels a little bit more doable. There are a lot of resources out there and YouTube is a great place to start. If you made it this far, you're probably a member of my immediate family or truly into what we're doing. We're still figuring out where to go next. We're thinking maybe some rainwater harvesting, but if you have a suggestion, just drop it down below. Catch you next time on Aqua Rock Ponics. Awkward.